So I want to do one more example. Um, this is the integral of dx over the square root of x squared plus 1. And remember, when you see x squared plus 1, that's your sort of warning flag that you're going to need a tangent substitution. Remember, minus tells you that you're going to use either a sine or a secant substitution. Plus tells you that you're going to use a tangent substitution. So we're going to use x equals tangent theta. And then dx equals secant squared theta d theta. And x squared plus 1 is secant squared, uh, sorry, tangent squared theta plus 1, which by the trigonometric identity is secant squared theta. And that was the whole point of making the substitution was to invoke that trigonometric identity that we would get a tangent squared plus 1 and we can convert it into secant squared theta. And so the square root of x squared plus 1 is just secant theta. So when we solve this integral, or rather make the substitution into this integral, we have dx in the numerator, so that converts into secant squared theta d theta. In the denominator, we have the square root of x squared plus 1. We already saw that that's secant theta. And so the secants, one of the secants cancels, and so we just get the integral of secant theta d theta. Now that's the trigonometric integral that we learned in the trigonometric integral lecture. Um, you kind of just have to remember how to do it. There's, a, there's an old trick where you multiply the top and bottom by secant theta plus tangent theta. So we covered that in the lecture on trigonometric integrals. The answer for the integral of secant theta came out to be natural log of the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta. And that, in turn, turns into, remember we have to substitute back into x. Secant theta, we figured out what that was right here. That's the square root of x squared plus 1. Tangent theta was our original substitution. That was x. And we have to put a constant on that. So that's our answer. Again, the key step there was recognizing that we had x squared plus 1 and recognizing that that would give us a tangent substitution. Um, it was also important to keep track of the dx and then to convert everything into thetas. And then at the end, we convert everything back into x's. So that's the end of the lecture on trigonometric substitutions. This has been educator.com.